My name is Tom Clifford, and we have Ireland on the move, and we're here tonight with some musicians. Greg Tucker. Andrea Mori. And Dan McDonald. Thank Don't forget Ella, our dancer. Ella. Okay, here we go. Go ahead, you start. Yep. Tea toddlers. Um, this is coming from Gerard's in Dorchester. We just played um, Goat on the Green and Pipe on the Hob, a set of jigs, and now we're going to play a set of reels. The um, Cup of Tea, named for us, um, the Merry Blacksmith, and Drowsy Maggie.
like no other people in other states, Massachusetts is well taken care of right now in Congress. We need to hit the Republican Party, the GOP, and that's what we need to hit right now. We need to get their support to put this through. So, um, in saying that, I will uh, like to invite uh, Celine Keneally. Um, Celine has been part of the board from day one, and she's in from San Francisco tonight. And uh, if uh, she'd just like to come up and say a couple of words. How are you? It's a surprise when you get in from San Francisco ahead of the crowd from New York. Um, but thank thankfully, the skies were good to us. So uh, it's great to see such a great turnout here this evening. Um, this is the second or third dialer meeting that has happened this year as we are back on the campaign trail again, hoping that we can get, uh, get immigration reform passed um, as it is moving through Congress at the moment. Um, as you said, it's, 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 it's a tough battle. Um, I think you know it yourselves. I think you've all seen the headlines in the paper. Um, today, there was a big meeting with the GOP leadership. Uh, the, the House Republicans got together to talk about what they are going to do. Um, and I was just uh, catching up in my reading there to see what was said. Um, so they are talking, they're, they're pushing for a piecemeal approach, which is not what we would like to see. Uh, it's not what the Senate would like to see. It's not the easy road. Um, it's definitely not the defined road at the moment, but there are negotiations going on between the, uh, the, the Republican leadership and the Democratic leadership to see what they can do in terms of moving this forward, whether they're going to go, they say they're not going to conference the Senate bill, um, and they want to do, they want to look at smaller bills that they will move concurrently through the House, and we'll see where we end up with that. Uh, as you said, it seems to be, and ILA is one of many groups that's working on this. Um, we partner with the GAA, with the AOH, uh, we work with the Embassy in Washington. Many of our members work with other larger national groups, and the feeling seems to be that all of the work will need to be done on the ground in constituencies at the local level with House Republicans to try to convince them why it is that they need to move this forward. Um, I was listening to a, um, an NBC piece coming up on the plane and they were talking about how the, the demographic has shifted in the electorate in terms of the, 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 the majority of white voters has now dropped and the, the, the number of, of immigrant voters uh, has risen. And we hope that that will be something that the leadership uh, in the House will have to keep an eye on and have to be aware of that there's, it's, it, it, they don't have a straight and clear path back to the White House anytime soon. So they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do with the rest of us. Uh, in terms of what we can do and what you can do, um, as you said, it's, it's mobilizing on the ground. Um, ILER will be one of the groups that will be pulling together strategy and will be pulling together people that need to be targeted, messages that need to go out, and we're just asking you for your help. Um, it is a long and frustrating road. We were all there in 2006 and 2007 as well. We had three different plane loads that flew from San Francisco to DC when you went down on the buses, and it is frustrating, and it is time consuming, and it is dis disheartening, but you know, it's politics, and unfortunately, we're playing a political game, and we will do what we can to make it work. Um, the Thanishta is coming in to DC tomorrow. He has some meetings with key Republican leaders, uh, including one of California's congressmen, uh, the House Whip, Kevin McCarthy. Um, so everybody is doing what they can, and we're just going to be asking you to do what you can. Um, it is going to be... It's anyone's guess how this is going to play out. Um, the Senate was a great victory. There was great work done here in Massachusetts um, and, with, and New Hampshire in terms of getting support for the Senate bill. And it is very much appreciated all of the calls that you made and all of the time that you put in to putting the pressure on the senators to support the bill. And it's not a perfect bill, but it's a lot better than what we've got. Um, and it did include uh, a path to citizenship for the undocumented. And I mean, that's what we want to see. That's what we're hoping for. And we're hoping that there will be a path for future flow for Irish immigrants to come to the US. So as this moves forward, as I say, 
the GOP leadership met. They started meeting at three o'clock this afternoon. So they're only just out of those meetings. So we need to see what the feedback is from those meetings. And we will definitely be coming back to everybody, asking them for support and giving you an idea of where we need to target. Um, we appreciate your patience and we appreciate the fact that you are here. Um, it's, it's, it's a great show of support. It's, we understand how frustrating it is, but we have to keep plugging away. And we will, if you will, um, and we hope that you will do it with us. Um, that's kind of, that's where it lies at the minute. Um, yeah. So you all know Father John, you know Sheila, you know Connell, you know all the, 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 the people from the pastoral centre here. Um, I work at the pastoral centre in San Francisco, so we've, we've, we have a long history, John. Um, and it's always great to come to Boston and to meet up with, 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 others, with, with the pastoral centre and with the immigration centre downtown and just to reconnect. And we all do very similar work and we all have constituents like you and, and people that we're trying to help and do what we can. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. Um, Neil and Kieran will be here soon and they will answer any questions that you have. And John, would you like to? Um, just before Father John comes up, I would just like to say one thing for him and his pastor centre and Sister Marguerite, that Father John goes down and visits uh, Irish undocumented or documented prisoners every week and it's a long stay and I know it's a tough thing for someone who gets pulled over for a broken tail light and they end up doing six weeks. Now, Father John can explain this a hell of a lot better than I can explain it, but this man does Trojan work and has always stepped up to the fore when he was asked to step to the plate. So uh, you've got to appreciate what he does, and he's a hell of a man, so I'll, I'll hand you over to him. Um, good evening to everybody. While I was planning what to say uh, over the last couple of days. Um, I was told uh, that I'm very long-winded um, when, I, when I preach or when I'm upstairs above on the other side of, of, of the church. So um, I decided tonight to not speak longer than two or three minutes, but probably they're saying to themselves, you should have probably said now 10 to 15 minutes because uh, the people from New York are actually stuck on the road. Um, like uh, um, Hugh said earlier, um, the pastoral centre has been very involved with the Irish, um, with the Irish undocumented, particularly um, for the last 25 years. Um, I came back here in 2005. Um, I'll always remember going to a meeting in New York. We had a chaplain uh, down there. Uh, Jerry Burns from Galway and Jerry and myself came out here together uh, the same day. Jerry went to New York and, and I came to Boston and I went down to visit Jerry uh, one weekend, I remember it was just before Christmas and he said to me, um, do you know, he said there's a meeting in Manhattan tonight uh, about immigration and he said, uh, I'm going, he said, do you want to go? And I said, sure, I know nothing about immigration, what would I be? You know, what would I be going to do something like that? And so he said, well, sure, come along. And uh, that's how I got involved with uh, the immigration movement, with uh, um, the, um, the importance of helping the undocumented here in Boston. Um, you know, I, I've, I've did my best around that. I know I haven't done everything right. I'm sure there are people out there that probably would criticize me or criticize any of us uh, for maybe not doing the right thing sometimes. But you know, kind of, I, I think my heart is in this. I, I realize I see it every day, what's going on with the undocumented people that are here. Uh, I suppose none of us could have imagined in 2007, as Celine said, six years ago, uh, that it would have taken Congress this long to try and do something and fix the immigration uh, problems that are in the United States. 
that the millions of undocumented people that are here, including 50,000, we think, of undocumented Irish who live here, we all know who they are. I reckon that we have at least 10,000 here in Boston because the people we deal with are all undocumented every day. Um, they pay their taxes like many of you do and like I do. Um, they have all contributed to the success of the US economy. And we never thought it would take this long that Congress would take so long to have them come out of the shadows. Uh, unfortunately, it has taken this long. The Irish Pastoral Centre are 25 years in existence. It's a grassroots organisation and has been on the front line as advocate and a voice for the undocumented Irish immigrants who are here in the United States. I've been chaplain here, as I said, since 2005. And uh, those years have gone very, very quickly. Working with my colleagues at the IPC, uh, we see at first hand the terrible situations facing those who are undocumented and of course the need for comprehensive immigration reform. Every day uh, I see Irish immigrants living in fear. Um, there are you know, many of you who are in construction, driving out every day in your trucks. Some of you I know that are nannies here or uh, that are involved in elder care. You have to drive to work. Many of you are driving on Irish driver's licenses in the hope that someday nobody, uh, someday that a state trooper won't pull up behind you and pull you in. I know I've heard so many of you talk about that fear, about being deported, about being barred from the United States for a very long time. And of course, I found myself ministering, supporting and accompanying young Irish men and women when their mother or father have passed away in Ireland. You can't go home, many of you. I know some of you that are here tonight have had a parent die very recently and could not go home. That's something that I don't think any of us that are legal could ever understand because we have never found ourselves in that position. I work, as Hugh said, with the prisoners in our prison, prison visitation program and I have seen the inside of the US prisons where immigrants who overstay their visas are like he said, you know, held in these detention centers for six weeks or longer. Many of those detained never committed a, a criminal act in their lives. But they are being held in terrible places, often among the criminal population because the prisons are overcrowded as it is. You know, I, I could go on and on with many other stories. Um, but what is much more important tonight is very urgent for all of us to continue the fight to get this comprehensive immigration reform bill passed through the House of Representatives. And we hopefully, please God, will get it signed by the President, President Obama before the end of the year. You know how the undocumented feel looking over your shoulder in fear of being arrested every day. The worry of who will take care of your children and your family if your husband or yourself, your wife is, is arrested or detained. There's only one solution. It is comprehensive immigration reform. And so the way to make that happen now, right now, is you can only do it. Many of you that are here tonight are probably undocumented. I know there are also many of you that are here are, are voters, are US citizens. And you also have a say in all this. 
uh, you know, for the last three or four weeks, we have been asking people to come to the pastoral center. We've set up a phone bank um, over the last number of weeks, and we have had a good response, but it could be a lot better. And there's no point in pretending. There are many of us out there that can make a difference. Nobody is going to ask whether you are legal or illegal. Uh, all we are going to ask you is to pick up a phone, come into the pastoral center, we have phones there, uh, and to pick up that phone and call the house representatives and say to them, you've got to pass this. We need comprehensive immigration reform. I've been doing it for the last month. All my colleagues at the Irish Pastoral Centre have been doing it. They have been doing it throughout the United States and the other centres. But you have got to do it also. We can only do a certain amount ourselves. And so our hope is um, we had a registration as you came in uh, this evening. Um, I'm hoping that over the next, however long this is going to take, whether it'll take four weeks or four months, we have got to be committed to this. Because if we don't, there is no other alternative. We have seen it for the last six years. We can go through that again. I mean, I am worn out from going to the prisons. Every whole week, I have visited maybe two prisons a week, every week for the last eight years. I don't want to continue to do that if I can help it. You know, and it could be any of us. Please God, it won't. But you've got to actually make the decision. That's why, you know, I felt that it was good that ILIR were going to be here tonight and they could give us an update. Hopefully they won't be too long more. Um, but it goes beyond that. You know, they can only do so much for us, but we also have to help ourselves. You know? Um, there are probably a lot more that could be here tonight, but they're not here. But it's only you that have got to turn around and tell them, well, you know, um, like I was at that meeting tonight, why weren't you there? Or why don't you decide to come in next week with me and pick up the phones and call the Congress offices and tell them you want comprehensive immigration reform? Because there are thousands of calls going in every day. Jerry Garvey, who's, who's our contact down, in, who works for the Irish Apostolate and is our contact in Washington, constantly have been telling us there are anti-immigrant calls going in every day to those offices. We sat back in 2007. We did our best. We lobbied, we went up and down, but we probably should have picked up the phone a lot more than we did. And the anti-immigrant people's voices were heard, heard over our voices. Now, we have to change that this time. Because if we don't, it's a bleak future for a lot of people. Ten years is a long time maybe to have to wait for something again. So what do we have to do? The only way I can see is that if we speak as one voice, that's the most important. We are Irish, we are proud to be Irish. But we also have to turn around and we've got to help ourselves. No point in giving out about things. No, you know, we were all depressed after 2007. We were despondent. We were, you know, but we can't really afford to do that this time. And we have to stick together. We have to turn around and have one voice and say we are Irish. We are proud to be here, but we also want to become legal. And the only way we can do that is to turn around and contact those offices in Washington and say to them, we want you to pass comprehensive immigration reform. I have family in New York. I have family in Florida. I have family in Connecticut. I have, Florida, I have, I have family in quite a number of states. 
And so I have been calling them every day for the last month, telling them to call their Senate senators in those particular states, and they did it. Many of our seniors who are coming in here every day to our senior program, we asked them to call the offices of 28 senators. They were not from Massachusetts. They were from all over the country, people that were on the fence, as we call them, to vote for this immigration bill. They went away and they called those senators, the seniors that are here, that are in their 70s now, because they care about the Irish that are here that are undocumented. Just say it to you there. Um, all the phone calls make a difference. Uh, four phone calls a day isn't enough. Four, 400 phone calls would be enough. And we just got to make them calls and give your commitment to the Irish Pastoral Centre, to the Irish Immigration Centre. Sheila Gleason's down there tonight. She, she's uh, been a true advocate for us for a long time. So, um, plus the GAA and the OH. Uh, Dick Wall is here tonight. Uh, I'd like to ask him to come up and say a few words and just um, explain how the OH are helping us and how uh, the OH, um, I mean, it has been deteriorating over the last number of years and that's because of, there was a lack of influx of Irish. Listen, we've waited from this from 1965 and if we don't commit and get this done within the next month or two months, or as Father John says, if it takes us six months, then we've got to get it done this year. We've passed the Senate. Let's get together and pass the House. Uh, Dick Wall from the OH. Thank you. Um, being from the ancient order of Hibernians, again, we are a national organization. We have the advantage of having contact with people. We have a, a national immigration director out of New York, Dan Dennehy. He's great. He, it's, he fights with, his pa with passion for this and all the other issues and everything, but this one right now is on the front plate. And through the use of social media and through the internet, he's able to get out to hundreds of people in all the different states. And we have divisions uh, and organization, our organization is in many of the states throughout the country. And he can contact these people constantly with the updates, with the information that we need. And um, between them <clears throat> and the media, uh, the word is getting out. The word is, though, we need to get, like they said, on the phone. And they give out the phone numbers of people in their areas and asking people, not just the Hibernians, but their friends and relatives that aren't Hibernians. And that's basically what we need to get everybody um, to, to jump on board here with all the phone calls. Uh, as we had a meeting not too long ago, the uh, Irish Cultural Center there with all the different organizations, which was great. And there's nothing more than <clears throat> strength in numbers. With all the organizations joined together, we all fight in the same fight. We all have the same goal in mind. If we all join together, we can probably pull this off. I, I, we're making great strides, like you said, that we got it through the Senate, now to Congress, all right? They start hearing from everybody, all these phone calls and everything, they're gonna start to realize, especially with election year coming up soon. Um, it's an issue that they need to seriously take a look at. Probably 25 to 30 years ago, I was involved in the uh, Ryan Donnelly pieces. I thought at that time that we would solve the problem, but it was only piecemeal, and I hear now that it's piecemeal coming again. Shouldn't be that way. I am a member of the GA, I'm North American Company Board Chairman. I recognize John McDevitt and Bernie as former chairman of the uh, Northeast Board. Uh, the GA is well, well situated throughout the states in the United States and they have been mobilized to make the calls and contact the congressmen and senators. But listen to you about the AOH and the GA. It's not the largest organizations that have to really get, get into it, it's everyone. Anyone who's Irish, Irish American, you know, enough is enough. I mean, we've been uh, playing games with immigration for over 30 years now. And if you really want to look at it, you've been playing games with immigration for over 50 years, since 1963, since Kennedy and Devalera signed the uh, uh, reverse uh, immigration bill that stopped the Irish from coming out here. 
And I think it's very important that we send a message to Congress as a united front that enough is enough, that we want what we want. And I know, and as a Republican, and I am a Republican, uh, I'm embarrassed sometimes of what's going on. But I'm more embarrassed myself because, quite honestly, when I was involved with the Donnelly, uh, Mars and Visas, I was well up to what was going on. And I apologize to anyone here. I'm not well up on what's going on. I remind the likes of you and this immigration uh, group to keep me informed. I should be a little bit better and smarter and keep myself informed. I'm a little bit, I should be a little bit more responsible because I do represent a large amount of the Irish in the States as well as Irish Americans. I also think it's important that, you know, don't leave it to someone else to do it. Okay, don't leave it to someone else to do it and expect someone else to pick up this plan. It doesn't happen. I mean, this, this all sh tonight should be packed. There's enough Irish kids in Dorchester alone that everyone should be down here. And if everyone had a cell phone and if you had the numbers to call, we could have our own little phone bank down here tonight. I think it's very important that we don't uh, give up, and I think it's very important that we send a strong message to Congress, and, and I promise to you that he has the support of the North American GA and the Gay Athletic Association, both here and in Ireland. Um, because the Ukraine, uh, Liam O'Neill is very well, and uh, Mark Duffy, the General Secretary, are very well aware of what goes on with immigration. Um, Patty McEvitt has made it very plain and clear to them what's going on. But like I said before, it's everyone's jobs, big, small, doesn't make a difference. Everyone has to jump on. We wanted to make sure that everyone was up to date as much as we were on this immigration issue. Uh, we've been at it a long time. Uh, if Joe Lydon is here, he started all the trouble in 1984 when he met with Brian Donnelly and decided that we need to deal with the immigration issue and that US laws could be changed. And he set the goal for us getting Donnelly visas and using that template saying we can change US law to get Morrison visas and peace process. And so Joe, I don't know whether we should thank you or run you out of town, but, but Joe and Coley and, and Bill McGowan and, and many more set that template. What we did in, in, in 2006 and 2007 with Senator McCain and others is we worked our damnedest. We worked to the top of the hill. Uh, we didn't get over the top. But unlike many of the groups, we are, well, speaking for myself, he's a Kerry man, so I'm a mountain man myself, so we never ran away from the top of the hill. We stayed up there. We stayed on Capitol Hill. We stayed making friends. We stayed making arguments. And we stayed education. The education issue was that our community has a large undocumented element in it. And the reason being is that the 1965 Act... Sorry, can everyone hear that? Because I, I, I'm a feeling I'm in church here where everyone is sitting at the back, so I don't know whether it's because Father John is up here or not. However, um, we made the arguments. We went back to 65. We quoted the various aspects. And we reached out where we knew others hadn't reached. And when... In the past bill, Senator Schumer had met with Neil and others and us in the Bronx. He was a major mover and he promised us that whenever there was legislation coming down, that he would rectify the 1965 Act, i.e. that he would create legal avenues for Irish people to come to the United States. Because he knew that in any comprehensive immigration bill that came through, that didn't deal or didn't have an aspect of legal immigration to the United States from Ireland was going to reimpose on us what happened after the Donnelly visas, the Morrison visas, and all the other visas. So last year, when a, a sweeping immigration bill went through the House late at night that had people coming from India, it was a high-tech bill, but it had people from three nations. So we met with Senator Schumer's office, with Neil and some others, and we said, OK, there's a bill gone through the House that's helped three countries. It's coming through the Senate. So, que pasa? So, on that, he agreed to draw up language with Bruce Morrison, our lobbyist and our advisor, 
that would allow for 10,000 visas a year from Ireland, 10,500, similar to the Australian ones. But with a caveat, the Australian visas require a degree. And we said that the degree system wasn't going to work for our people because at the time, the people coming onto employment lines in Ireland were coming from building sites. They weren't coming from academia or otherwise. We wanted to have the same standard as we wrote for the Morrison visas. That means training, GED equivalent. That means that we caught that everyone coming, whether it be trades, non-trades, or semi-trades, someone said even an Erlingus carpenter. Well, if we could prove he was an Erlingus carpenter that he had trained for four or five years on the flight over, then he could get one of them. Or she, if she wants to be a carpenter, or other people in the trade. That language we got, and, and he, the, the tribute should be recognised, that one great man took it to the other side of the aisle. And while we don't get involved in party to politics, as my mother would say, credit where credit is due. And when Hugh Meehan and Jimmy Gallagher, in their spare time, went to meet Jerry McDermott in Scott Brown's office, Scott Brown took that bill to the Republican caucus in the Senate. Scott Brown deserves a round of applause and a big thank you from our community because the work we are getting done right now on the Republican side of the aisle was laid for a lot by the work of Scott Brown. And he went, he went public and he said, now, the bill had lots of wards that dealt with, dealt with future flow. And what he did was when he went into the Republican Congress, he said, we have locked out the people from the country that built our country. If we say we're going to remember our friends, so we're going to say, we, you come, you build our roads, you build our churches, you build everything, and then we stop you coming. He put that to the Republican caucus. We got that to the committee, and we would have gotten it through by the committee, but there was a, a cranky senator from Iowa called Senator Grassley, and he blocked it, and blocked it, and blocked it, and blocked it. And we were beaten by the clock. We hired the best Republican lobbyists. We hired everyone. We had Schumer had the 53 votes, he had the Democratic caucus. Scott Brown would have quite a few Republicans, but he couldn't get out of a committee. So, once again, we're at the top of the hill and no shelter. The human stories, I'm sure many of you out here experience it, that our community has to go through because of the fact that through the fault of previous Irish governments, really, um, Immigration was shut down from Ireland from 1965 on, and that was a great tragedy. And now I really feel what Tony Blair called the hand of history, there is one more opportunity, a huge opportunity, the last opportunity in my lifetime, in my opinion, to pass an Immigration Act. And I would have said to you, when I was up here many years ago with Senator Kennedy going around and how confident he was that the Kennedy-McCain bill, when we brought thousands of people to Washington, when the whole country seemed to be in favour of immigration reform and then our hopes were dashed at the last moment. I would have said we'd probably never get a chance again. But I have to hand it to people like Kieran and the Irish Lobby for Immigration Reform units here in Boston and San Francisco, all over the country, who kept with this fight. And it's never been more important than now. And here we are one more time. And if you look back at the history of our people, we emigrated in the 20s to America. We emigrated in the 50s. We emigrated in the 80s. Now we're emigrating again. And it's causing the same stress, stresses and strains for those people who come here undocumented in their thousands because things are not getting better in Ireland. It's the same old story. So we simply have to stop it right now. And this is our last opportunity, in my opinion. And I think of that couple who live next door to my wife's first cousin, and I think, what do you say to someone whose mother is dying in Ireland and who knows if she goes home, she will not be able to come back and talk to her and meet her kids and talk to her husband un unless they go back to Ireland with her. And they have nothing in Ireland, they know that. And I know this is the story of many of you out there. And I think that the one thing that we have is we have power and we have influence and we have to start using it one more time. Kieran talked about the peace process where we managed to convince an American president. Now we've got to convince the Republican House of Representatives but in that House of Representatives, there are people like Paul Ryan, who Kieran met with last week. There are people like Kevin McCarthy. There are people like Peter King. There's a bunch of congressmen called Murphy. There's a bunch of congressmen called Fitzpatrick. There are Irish Americans. It's not Ted Kennedy. It's a different generation. But there are Irish Americans that we can reach out to as Irish people and say, we want this. And as we talk, the Irish foreign minister is on his way to Washington 
to lobby for this particular bill. And believe me, it's probably the last thing on his mind that he wanted to jump on a plane after the abortion vote in the Dublin Parliament tonight and come to Washington. But he came here because the pressure came on from people like you talking about this issue, about the undocumented, from ILIR, from publications like the Irish Emigrant here, and Conal Gallagher, from people all across, not just San Francisco and Boston and New York, but everywhere where Irish are. We have a right to be in America. We have a right. And yet that is something that we find harder and harder as years go by. And our communities are suffering. And you need only look at the great barometer of any community, which is the GAA. And I know in New York, certainly, the team numbers have shrunk dramatically. Now when the Connacht Final Games are, when the Connacht Championship Games are, playing, are played in New York, the, Irish, the New York team gets hammered because the talent isn't there anymore. People are, people are unable to come out here legally. So we have one more chance. And we are the Irish, and we've always been the underdogs in this country. But that has to stop right now because we are in a key position to change that. And what Kieran talked about, the E3 visa would ensure that in the future people could come here legally and do what a million and a half Irish people did from the time of the famine, which is emigrate to the United States. And I think that as we look at the next couple of months, whatever you need to do, you have some great leaders here in the community who will be in touch with you. In terms of joining Father John's phone banks, in terms of reading Colin Gallagher's articles about it, in terms of getting involved, <coughs> Just go on the Facebook page of ILIR, see what can be done. I really feel very strongly that the opportunity and the time has never been better. And I feel very strongly, I was coming up in the car today on that interminable journey and reading the reports from Washington. And the reports from Washington were interesting about this big conclave today that the Republican, Republicans in the House had. The, the word of mouth coming out of the meeting was that John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, who holds the future of this immigration bill in his hand, said that he was not going to do nothing, that he was going to do something on immigration, and that the Republicans could not sit by idly and allow an immigration bill to die, that they had to make the contribution. And that's what we need to hear from the Republicans, and that's what we need to hear, that they need to hear from the Irish American community. We're probably the only large white group that's organized in the way we are in terms of being able to impact this issue. Western European immigration generally has stopped since 65, but the Irish have been the exception. And we need to reach out to our colleagues in other states, in other places that we know, and really push these buttons that make the difference in, in the end. By this time in November, we'll know the fate of this bill. We'll know whether many of you out here can become legal, whether for, for others of you, people from Ireland, perhaps from your family, can emigrate here legally in the next few years. But I do really urge you very strongly to get involved over the next few months. There is no fight, fight more vital for this community than the fight for immigration reform. Thank you very much. Thank you.